Um, I think one of the great joys in the life of a congregation is to bring up our youngest and to experience what Mary Jo just talked about, you know, uh, that blessings of God just flowing down upon them. And just like the rain at camp, uh, we're going to have the water coming down on Miss Amaya. So Randy and Rochelle and uh, uh, Gary and the sponsors, if you could all come on up, please. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. Thank you. So, and, and by the way, um, you have one of those pastor terrible moments that I didn't realize until too late, uh, and thankfully I did catch it in the certificate, but the bulletin spelled your name wrong. It's not, yeah, it's not a Z, or it's not an X at the end. Come on up, come on, come right here. Yeah, it's uh, Jimenez, not Jimenex. So uh, I'm sorry. I, I noticed that in the bulletin too late. It's right on the certificate, so that's the important thing. But um, anyway, I've had the opportunity uh, to uh, meet with Rochelle and Randy and, and to talk about uh, what it is, what these uh, vows are about. And I, I, what a thrill this is for their family because Rochelle's father is United Methodist clergy. Uh, this is Gary Shepherd, Reverend Gary Shepherd from the West Virginia Annual Conference. Yeah, all my West Virginians, all my Mountaineers are thrilled. And um, uh, so Gary's actually going to have the opportunity to uh, baptize his granddaughter. And I think that's so cool. I know my dad had the opportunity to baptize all of his grandchildren. And uh, so I, I think that's something holy and sacred and special. And I am thrilled that Gary's going to be able to uh, to do it when we come to that point. And we're so glad you're here to sponsor this beautiful young lady. And so, okay, um, I want to ask you uh, some questions after I have Monica take care of me. As a member of this church family, it's my privilege to present Amaya for Christian baptism. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, now um, we ask you the vows of regards to your uh, faith in Jesus Christ. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you to reject all that is evil. Do you repent of your sin? Do you, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, would you say, I do? I do. Beautiful. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace? Do you promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and of races? If so, would you say, I do. I do. And will you nurture Miss Amaya in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching, by your example, that she would be guided to accept God's grace for herself, profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, would you say, I will. Okay, and to the sponsor, thank you for standing up uh, with Rochelle. Will you nurture uh, my in Christian faith and life, include them before you now in your care, and surround her in a community of love and forgiveness? If so, will you say, we will? We will. Wonderful. Okay, let me get the water here. Um, if we can be in an attitude of prayer, let's pray. Almighty and holy God, we give you thanks for this gift of water that as we see it showered down upon Amaya, that we are reminded of your great mercy that floods our lives, of your love that flows down upon us. Lord, I pray that you'll be with Amaya's parents and help them raise this young lady up in your will and in your way. And Lord, we thank you for all the family that are here to witness this. Help us all to be reminded of your amazing grace that cleanses us, that helps us grow, and gives us a sign of new birth. We pray these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Gary, if you'd have that opportunity to uh, baptize your granddaughter. Yeah, absolutely, and we should too. Here, here. 
my grace, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of the water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, congregation, um, the uh, vows have been made, and now it's um, our turn as a congregation, because we realize that it takes uh, more than parents uh, to help raise a believer in Jesus Christ. And so I ask all of you, members of the household of God, I commend to you, Amaya, to your love and to your care. Will you do all in your power to increase her in faith, confirm her in hope, and perfect her in love? Will you respond by saying, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, now I get to take you and show you off. Can I show you off, young lady? Here, let's show you off. You're like, who is this crazy guy? Ready? I'm going to show you off. See, you know these people. Here we go. I see. Look at all them. That's your whole family right there. This is Amaya. This is Miss Amaya, the newest part of our faith family. This is Amaya. See, there's the one. Hi, can you say hi to the Braylings? Hello, this is Amaya. Watch that. This is Amaya. This is Amaya. That's part. Hi, Dave. There's Mr. Wenger. Hi, this is Amaya. Can you say hi. There's Dr. Smith. You're welcome. This turns out. Hi, this is Amaya. Daddy? Wonderful family of God. All right, I'm going to give you a certificate if I may. Let me just sneak through here. Just got a small certificate that we would like to offer to you and a little cross. I'll give you the cross, give you the certificate, and we've got a blanket. This is a blanket donated by the, we have the baby bundle ministry here at Church of the Lakes. Yeah, so. All right. You may, you. may be seated. Thank you. Thanks. So, no, thank you. Thank you.
Uh, throughout the summer, the remaining part of the summer, uh, Pastor Jared and I have been working on a series of messages entitled Life's Playlist. Uh, you know, many of our young people, uh, they go on Spotify or Pandora, um, Apple Music and things, and they, they create playlists of some of their favorite songs. Well, in our scripture, we have uh, a list uh, in the book of Psalms that uh, really help shape and form God's people, the Hebrews. And these Psalms were put to a meter, uh, put to poetry, uh, that were comprised by a variety of individuals, King David most notably, but there were others as well. And uh, these songs were something that could be easily memorized. Uh, because it's a song, it kind of works its way into your soul. Instruments uh, were added to that. It would often be kind of going back responsively, back and forth. Uh, and it was such that it really kind of worked its way. The, the Psalms worked their way into the very fabric and soul of God's chosen people, the Hebrews. And it told a little bit of God's salvation history, that uh, from creation, uh, then to the time where they were in bondage in slavery in Egypt, how they were delivered out in the Exodus. They received the law on Sinai. Uh, they wandered through the wilderness. Uh, they had that chance of coming to the promised land and, and then having King David and then, and then being exiled uh, from that promised land. And, and it really kind of weaves in throughout the narrative uh, of the songs, of uh, the poetry of the Psalms that uh, it's found. But it's more than just salvation history. Uh, the, the Psalms were also medicine for the soul. That when we were angry, uh, there was a Psalm that would speak to that. When we faced injustice, the Psalm would cry out to that. When we were lamenting our challenges, uh, the Psalms would have language to address that. And throughout the Psalms, you found uh, this sense of a God who is far more mysterious, powerful, fearsome, gracious, and loving than what we can really uh, imagine. And that's what was kind of woven in the fabric. Now, what we have to realize that as followers of Jesus Christ, the Psalms were Jesus' playlist. This was uh, what he formed in his soul, in which he sang, where he quoted more than any other scripture was from the Psalms. When he was on the cross, he uh, died. He called out one of the psalms of faith to nourish and comfort him. But the thing I want to drive home, and, and Jared and I are trying to work on, is that not only were the psalms Jesus' playlist, but they also pointed towards Jesus, that the fulfillment of God's promises that you'll find within the psalms are really realized through Jesus Christ. That's what we want to kind of uh, do today. Now, uh, we're now up, and by the way, uh, I put the list of psalms on the front cover of your bulletin. My prayer is, is that you'll use this throughout the summer and kind of dig into it, journal, uh, get out your Bible, underline key phrases that stand out to you, and that we're going to be going through some of these uh, the more uh, popular and uh, predominant psalms, and we're using that. Um, I want us now, if you can, to turn to page 772 of your hymnal, of your United Methodist hymnal, 772. Um, we're going to read uh, Psalm 37 responsively. Um, I will read the light print. Uh, you'll respond by reading the dark print. We're just going to read, though, through verse 7. And um, I'm going to start off right... Uh, with the very first verse, uh, you'll see how I'm going to change the language slightly. When the hymnal was produced, they used the Revised Standard Version. 
Uh, since then, the new Revised Standard Version has come out, and I think the translation's a little better uh, in the new Revised Standard Version uh, that I will be using at least in verse 1, and then we'll go forth as them. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be a- envious of wrongdoers. For trust in the Lord and do good. So you will dwell in the land and enjoy security. For commit your way to the Lord. Trust in God who will act. Bring forth your vindication as the light and your right as the noonday. This is God's word for God's people. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of each of our hearts, Lord, I pray that they'll be found loving and acceptable in your sight. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. Do not fret because of the evildoers. Wow. (laughs) Uh, Fret. Uh, That's often easier said than done, isn't it? Do not fret. Uh, What does the word fret mean? Now, some of you who are musicians, uh, especially who play guitar, you may think that a fret is a raised piece uh, of wood, a rib, on the neck of, uh, uh, of a guitar. And that by pushing down on a fret that you can produce a chord. That's not the kind of fret I'm talking about. I'm going to go, actually, uh, to uh, the definition that you'll find in the dictionary, that to fret is to be constantly, visibly worried and anxious. I want to say that again. To fret is to be constantly and visibly worried and anxious. Now, with that definition... I'd have to say there's a whole lot of fretting going on, (laughs) isn't there, Uh, around our world. And certainly in a world where there's 24-7 kind of news feeds that stream forth to us constantly, whether that may be a child abduction in a community, and we get a news feed on that, and then we hear about tainted food that we run to our freezer to make sure we're not in the lot that has the salmonella or whatever. Or we hear the latest kind of terror warnings from a nation by where we may have a loved one traveling and and that gets us kind of uh, visibly worried and anxious and we begin to fret. And that is something that we have to kind of face on on a daily basis. And really, I think what can occur, especially with this 24-7, 365 kind of news world by where we are inundated with, is that we can get caught up in the anxiety of the day and that there is a lot of fretting going on that uh, healthcare professionals tell us that now 17% of Americans are, are on some form of anti-anxiety medications, that uh, despite the fact that our country is not at war, uh, some of the psychologists say that the ne- level of anxiety are higher now in peacetime than what it has ever been in times of, of war. Uh, There is a lot of uh, that sense of fretting, of worry, of anxiety that we are confronted with uh, on a daily basis. And, you know, you you think about how this kind of new world of kind of online digital streaming has an impact on on our soul. I mean, maybe we think that we're just going to kind of chill out a little bit and uh, before we go to bed, and we're going to check our, 
our Facebook or our Twitter account or wherever we get kind of checking up on our friends. We're going to check up on our friends, and that's kind of the intent. And you start, and immediately you, you come across this kind of news feed uh, about something political or religious that maybe a friend posted and gets your blood kind of boiling, either for a pro or for a con, and, and you get kind of uh, anxious and upset about that. And then you, you, you go down a little bit more and, and, and you see this jerk that you know and, and, and these, you know, great things are happening to this jerk and you just kind of get a little kind of, you know, why, why do the wicked prosper? You know, you start thinking of that. And, and you go down a little bit further and you come across a friend and, and they're having an amazing experience. Their, their kid's hoisti, hoisting up some trophy or, uh, or, or, or your friend's in this exotic, wonderful, beautiful vacation. And you get this little seed of jealousy that starts kind of forming in your heart. And then you get across another friend and they're airing their dirty laundry against a family member and you feel like you got to respond and, and so you do that and here you're ready to get to bed and instead of, uh, of kind of chilling out, you find your blood pressure rising, you get anxious, you get fretting, you get nervous. That's the kind of world in which we live. And there's a whole lot of fretting going on. And here is David uh, writing a psalm maybe a thousand years before Jesus. He says, do not fret because of the evildoers. Now, in, in David's world, just kind of, you know, it's attributed to David. Uh, David has no problems kind of dividing the world into two different camps. Uh, the people who he describes as the wicked and those who are righteous, uh, okay? And kind of has these two various camps that he kind of uh, unfolds in the psalm. And, and as he's writing this, he uses what is called a literary tool of being an acrostic alphabet. Now, you can impress your friends and neighbors by knowing what an acrostic alphabet is. That means that every other um, uh, phrase of this uh, poem is written in uh, letters of the Hebrew alphabet, okay, kind of A to Z, and uh, that, that was to serve as a memory device for the Hebrew people, for the Jewish people, that Psalm uh, 37 was in this uh, uh, um, acrostic alphabet. The analogy, I, I kind of did my own. I said, okay, you're going to school, and you're a teacher, gives you the assignment, what did you do this summer? And write it into a poem. And uh, if you are doing an alphabetic acrostic, you might say, well, um, I argued with my sister, I baked cookies, I called my friends, I daydreamed, I emailed friends, and I floated in the swimming pool. You see? Argued, baked, called, daydreamed, emailed, floated. Okay? That is an alphabetic acrostic. Okay? And that's exactly what Psalm 37 is in the Hebrew. Of course, we, we don't know, unless you know Hebrew. Uh, Gary, I don't think you know Hebrew, do you? Um, that, uh, that's kind of how it's unfolding uh, uh, in Psalm 37. Now, uh, what David is trying to do is divide this world into the wicked and to the righteous, and specifically a righteous one is the word, and we're going to come back to that concept there. And uh, what he's trying to say is we get so caught up in trying to see the wicked and their uh, problems that we kind of lose sight of God's plan and intent in our life. And so David gives three very practical um, uh, ways by where we can battle against fretting. Three remedies to fret. Now, for some of you out there who are naturally nervous or anxious, these are things you can apply in your own life. Okay. The first is what he says in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. If you have your Bibles, um, you can kind of uh, utilize that. Trust in the Lord and do good. 
it, trust is something where it is critical to take a long view versus a short-sighted sense of your direction. Now, this is what David is kind of trying to draw our attention to. You got to think big picture. You got to look forward, okay, to where we're going rather than just getting mired in the present. Okay? To trust in the Lord is to get a sense that God's ultimate future will be a sense of prosperity and blessing. And so, therefore, we get the, these phrases uh, that you'll find. For instance, in verse 20 of Psalm 37, But the wicked perish, and the enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. The wicked will vanish. They will cease to exist um, because of their not being connected with God. Uh, you'll get to that point in verse 29, uh, in contrast, where it says, Instead, the righteous, they will inherit the land, and they will live in it forever. Again, what is crucial in helping us not to fret is to take the long view, to look forward to where God's preferred future is in our lives, okay? So think, look forward to God's preferred future. Trust in the Lord, okay? Now, that leads us then to the second remedy. Not only are we to look forward and trust in the Lord, but then uh, we then are to take delight in the Lord, for he will give you the desires of your heart. To take delight in the Lord is uh, what it means to worship, to devote our attention to God. In other words, to look up, to look up towards God. And when we look up towards God, we don't get so fixated by looking around and starting to compare ourselves to everyone else around it. When they're prospering, that, you know, we, we feel a sense of, why isn't that us? Or when people are suffering and we sit there and say, oh my God, it is not. You see, <laughs> Uh, what the idea of looking up towards God, I think it gives us the appropriate focus of how we are not to fret, okay? And, and what um, the psalm, uh, what David goes on to say, when it says to take delight in the Lord, he will uh, give you the desires of your heart. And then in verse five, commit your way to the Lord. Okay, let's sum it up so far that we, uh, to help prevent fretting, we look forward to God's preferred future by trusting him. We are to look up and to delight in the ways of the Lord and commit our path to him, to keep our focus towards the Lord rather than get into that comparison game uh, of all those who are around us. And then finally, and perhaps the most challenging, is found in verse 7. Uh, the, David writes, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Be still and wait patiently. Now, you know, I'm not too bad. Uh, and when it comes to looking forward to God's future in my life, I mean, I believe that in God's right time, uh, God's kingdom will prevail. I, I have no problems looking to a future with God. I don't really have much problems delighting and looking upwards towards God uh, in worship and in devotion. My great challenge is to wait patiently. Uh, that's kind of not uh, something that I, it comes to me easily. Um, you know, I, I'm not so much where I wait. I, I always kind of see the challenges that come, and I wait for the other shoe to drop, and I need to prevent that other shoe from dropping, and then I start worrying about it and fretting about it and trying to be proactive. And, and here, I think, is what David offers is uh, a remedy to help us from fretting of having this corrosive kind of anxiety and resentment and jealousy that can form so easily in our soul. Be still and wait. And, you know, friends, what I have discovered is that when I'm not being still, when I'm not waiting patiently, then I often try to fill my soul with other distractions 
And I think that's one of the great problems of our day, that we're not willing to be still and wait patient. And so we stuff our souls with all kinds of distractions. We stuff it with um, uh, maybe drugs or alcohol to kind of soothe us. Or we stuff it with uh, pornography or shopping. And, and we get all these addictions that begin to wrap their tentacles around us. And why? Because we're not willing to wait patiently upon the presence of the Lord because we're fretting for what's going on uh, in our lives. So I want to sum it up. These are the great remedies of today in Psalm 37. If you are fretting, to first of all, look forward and trust in the Lord, to know that he has your future, okay? Secondly, to delight in the Lord by looking up in worship and in devotion. And then finally, to uh, be still and wait patiently for God's great plan to unfold in your life. And I think that if we do that, we will begin to find kind of the solution to the, the fretting that so easily comes upon us in this journey. Well, as I want to, as I mentioned, uh, the Psalms were not only Jesus' playlist, but ultimately they point to Jesus. You see, uh, Psalms were written um, maybe up to a thousand years prior to the coming of Christ. And yet, David talks about this righteous one. I mean, throughout this phrase, uh, throughout this psalm, you'll find some of these phrases. For instance, uh, the righteous one, it talks about how uh, the meek will inherit the land and they will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. You see some shades that remind you maybe of what uh, uh, was read by Anne in the Sermon on the Mount? Uh, about how the meek shall inherit the earth and, and how we should not worry. Uh, how, how about that sense uh, later on uh, in uh, uh, the Psalms in, in verse 30 about how out of the mouths of righteousness they utter wisdom and their tongues speak justice. Or, or how about this, that uh, when we, uh, in verse 37, we behold the upright for their uh, is posterity. There is eternity for the peaceable. Friends, when Jesus uh, lived amongst us, he was the righteous one that was prophesied here by David years before. Uh, it, it is in Jesus where we find a sense that there is e a posterity, there is eternity for those who, who are peaceable in his presence. And, and the last verse of Psalm um, 37 really stood out to me. This is in verse 40. I print it in your bulletin. It says this. Uh, the Lord helps those, or helps them, and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked, and he saves them, because they take refuge in him. Uh, this is crucial to our understanding of who Jesus is. Because we think that the Lord, Jesus Christ, he helps us. He rescues us. He rescues us from the wicked. He saves us. Why? Not because we have to jump through any hoops. Not because we have to tithe. Not because we have to, uh, you know, read a specific book. No. No. Where we find our salvation is anyone who takes our refuge in the source of our salvation. So what about us? In the midst of anxiety, in the midst of uh, that sense of the fretting of your soul, I hope all of us will be able to look forward and trust in the Lord. I hope that we will look upward and delight in God's presence. And then I hope we will be able to be still and to wait patiently upon God's unfolding plan in your life. Let's pray. Almighty and holy God, we give you thanks for this life's playlist that you give to all of us, your people. They are to provide comfort, guidance, but most of all, they are to point to your son, Jesus Christ. For it is in you, Lord Jesus, that we, where we take our refuge, 
where we find our strength. Lord, come upon us, fill us. Help us to delight in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I would invite you, if you are able, to stand and turn to hymn number 467. 467. We're going to sing verse 1 and 2 of Trust and Obey. So please stand. 467, Trust and Obey. After all of our worship services, we'll have one of our prayer partners in the chapel that's located underneath the balcony. Maybe there's been something in your life that's come up this week. You just like a word of encouragement and prayer. That ministry will be made available to you. Also, please don't forget, uh, Friday afternoon, our young people are going to be doing um, uh, ama- the, uh, gra- the Amazing Grace Race. Uh, and that'll be at 3 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And you want to come on and support our kids. They've been going to be working on that this week. Uh, and they'll be sharing their performance with us at 3 in the afternoon. I'll receive now this blessing, this benediction. Lord, as we depart this place of worship, help us to uh, really look forward to trust in you. Help us to look upward and delight in you. And then help us to be still and wait patiently for you. Send us forth now into our homes, our schools, our workplace, and our community. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.